Martin. Um, Amy Joe? Martin. Is that Jill Charlie Ford? Or Joe or Charlie Ford? Anyone from the um, Web Dean Stevens? I don't know. If you can unmute yourself and you want to chat, that would be great, but we'll guess who you are at some point. All right. <laughs> Um, so uh, Peter sent out the agenda, uh, the minutes and meeting dates for next year ahead of the meeting. If I could have a motion to approve the minutes of the September 29th meeting. Thank you, Amy. I make a motion. Yep, thank you. I have a motion from Amy. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, thanks, Julie. Second from Julie. Uh, any corrections, additions, edits, deletions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Good to have you all raise your aye. hand. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> okay. Um, Peter, moving into all business, visitor map and kiosk, the Connecticut Humanities Quick Grant. Do we have any an update on that? Uh, the only update is uh, I have... Um communicated with Scott Wand at Connecticut Humanities just to uh, confirm uh, the idea and to get some feedback, uh, which I have done. So he seems to think that this is a uh, worthwhile uh, project. The deadline is let me just find it here, February 5. So we have some time. Um, and I, I have to find out if um, our match, which can be in kind, can be um, accumulated before the grant is actually uh, approved. So I'd like to do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting if possible before the uh, grant deadline, just so we get the ground running when we get the grant and we can get these installed in the springtime. So that would be the, um, the big question. Um, if we can do that and get a lot of this accomplished uh, over the winter and um, because it will be a month after the February 5th deadline before they give us an answer. So, okay. so you want to use the slow time in February to get some of the pre-installation work done? Get the design work done, yep. you know, okay. get some of it written um, so that, um, you know, we're ahead of the curve and we're not tied up as the winter goes along. So right. if we can't, if we can't, then that's fine. But I just wanted to see if we can use that January, you know, window uh, to get some of this accomplished. All right. So have you asked him that question? I sent them an email. I haven't gotten an answer yet. Okay. All right. So keep us posted. And then Peter, do you want a small <laughs> subcommittee to work on that? You gonna do it yourself? What are you gonna do in terms of actually writing the app? Sure. Um, I be happy to accept any uh, any assistance at all. So if somebody wants to help me, that would be great. If you want a committee, that's fine too. It's your preference. What would you prefer, one or two people, or well, that's probably rather than a committee and then having a formal meeting, you know, that kind of thing. We can we can divvy up the responsibility. So if anyone uh, wants to volunteer, I know we will need the assistance of the historical society. So um, that would clearly be. Um, representation from there would clearly be appreciated. So Amy, that would be either you or Jill between the two of you, I'm assuming you can figure out who's who can help. Um, well, I'm familiar with writing the quick grants, so. Okay. It'll probably end up being me. Okay, okay. perfect. Uh, and Peter, I can also help if you need the help. So sure. maybe between the three of us, we should be okay. All right, great. Uh, what other kind of what other kind of assistance do you think you would need on that? I think uh, ultimately, if we are able to start uh, writing and designing the individual kiosks, we would certainly like some um, similar to what we did for the heritage uh, walk. Is we'd like some eyeballs and some feedback uh, from individuals as we um, put all of that together. So. Um, probably follow a similar format to what we did the first time around. So Peter, we're talking about uh, Trinity Church, yep. Conservation Meadow, yep. and the Shopkeeper's Kiosk, right? 
Yes. Yep. Okay. So I'm assuming that the church and the conservation would like to take first stab at writing their panels. Yeah, I've asked them to start thinking okay. about that, and then uh, and then we obviously have to main, maintain some continuity um, yep. and and gather imagery and whatever that kind of stuff. And obviously, we would look to see if the historical society has some resources as well, um, and then ultimately put the narratives together. Uh, and design them. So I'm, we're probably going to need to uh, retain our graphic designer as we did uh, the first time around. Mm -hmm. So I have not talked to him yet. I know he's still available and around. So um, that's probably my next order of business, just making sure that he's able to um, maybe help us with that. And I don't remember who did final editing on the panels. I mean, you did the bulk of it, but wasn't there one other person who kind of we made hired the... a yeah we hired a historian if you remember um, yeah we were, kind of, we were kind of required to do that so I don't I don't think for this project we would um, but we I think we would rely on the historical society um, once again uh, to do that so um, okay I think between um, Martha Smart and Jill yep have all our bases covered great. Okay. All right, good. Perfect. All right. Um, anything else on that, Peter? That's it. Okay. So EV charging station, I saw you sent an email about, is it a training that's taking place this week? So there's a series of, of uh, EV, believe it or not, um, station training opportunities. I'm hoping that one of them um, it's like a series of 12 workshops. I didn't even know about it until last week, but there's one Thursday, I think, another one Thursday. Um, but it's basically everything you needed to know and then some about EV, EV charging stations. As I say, I hope uh, one of these has to do with funding opportunities because as I look at the sustainable CT matching fund, it may not be the best use of that funding mechanism. I think we would probably have other projects at some point that I would love to use that for. And this may not be the right exact one. Um, and then the other thought is if, if there, and I have not found funding sources specifically out there for EV charging stations, believe it or not, um, it may end up something we want to put a uh, request uh, through the town's capital improvement budget next time around. Um, it's not a high ticket item, but nevertheless, it's, it is more of a capital improvement than, um, than I think it's suited for the sustainable, the sustainable CT. I think there are other better, better matches out there for us to, to some pursue at another point. Okay. All right. Um, so Peter, did you share that training with everybody or just me? I'm I sorry. think I just sent it to you, Chris. Okay. Um, so, cause it sounds like anybody can sign up and you can sit in and listen to it. It's an hour, hour and a half long, if I remember. Yes. Um, so if anybody's interested, just let Peter know, you might want to send it to Betty. Yeah, that's yes. true. Yes. Because Betty was the one who initially brought up the EV charging station. Yep. Um, she has the electric car. Right. Katie has an electric car too. Oh, so send it to those two and say, since they are users, um, if they could, between the two of them, sit in on some of those, that would be great. Sure, or, or divvy up the responsibilities. Alternate. Yeah, yep. right. Only because it sits in the middle of the day. So I know for some people, it may be hard to sit in on those. Yep. So it's a virtual. Um, yes. Yep. Yeah. Peter, why don't you send everybody the link so that just in case we want to, unless it's limited? No, it's open to, I think they really are looking to create a grassroots initiative from citizens to become, you know, the advocates to make sure there are as many of these installed throughout the state. There's a state goal in terms of how many vehicle charging stations, how many vehicles, that kind of thing. So I think they're trying to, you know, create a groundswell of people who would be the advocates in each community. So uh, I think the more the merrier. Okay. 
Right. So okay. it's Thursday, the 29th from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, and Peter, you know what? If the Connecticut Green Bank is sponsoring it, I wonder if they might have funding. I already asked, and at oh. this point, they don't have a program, and they weren't aware of any program. So um, I was going to reach out to Eversource. They did have a program a while back. Um, it helped to fund the charging station um, next to Panera. Not Pan yeah, next to Panera. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a big sign on it. So um, they're on my list of folks to contact to see if there's something, or maybe they're planning a funding program down the road. Right. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if you can send that out to everyone, so that would be great. And then we can just kind of keep, keep it on the agenda and touch base every month and see how it's moving forward. Yep. Um, Heritage Commission membership and appointment. Carolyn Carroll graciously agreed to do some work on this. And uh, Carol, I don't care which Carol wants to pipe up with that. Um, Carol, you had some recommendations, right? To go back to the council. All right. So that uh, looking at the schedule of uh, who we have presently on the board or on the commission, and then looking at the definition for who should be on the Heritage Commission. So one is to be the executive director of the Historical Society. So that'll either be Amy or Jill. Executive again of Webb Dean Stevens, Joshua or Katie. One right. member of the old Wetherill shopkeepers and that should be Joseph uh, Pascal who was mm -hmm. with us last time. Yep. Uh, Chamber, Julie, uh, that was your function before. Are you willing to still continue in that function? Yes. Okay. Uh, one resident of Wethersfield, and that'll be uh, Carol Hall, if that's fine with Carol. One member of Economic Development, so I guess that's Judy. Yep. And one representative of the Silasteen Business Community. Now, here is my suggestion concerning that. I think that we take a look at those people who do something with tourism when it affects someone with, on, the, on that strip. There's Cove Deli. They sometimes do things, particularly when they've done the taste and other things like that. Uh, Sammy's Liquor also participates uh, at the Historical Society events and other things along the way. And then we have to look at uh, anyone else that might possibly be on that, on that spread. And my feeling is that if we asked, I would really like to ask Cove Deli. I can't ask, I know Peter has got to ask, but with the caveat that they only have to attend when it's going to affect them. Because other than that, I can't see that these people would come all the time. And I think that his, his partner in crime there, uh, Kelsey would be a wonderful representative, but we don't want to, because they're so busy already with their businesses, we don't want to add such a burden that they don't want to participate as such. Uh, the resident of Old Wethersfield, hopefully that's me, uh, representative of the business community would be Chris, the chair, and uh, one representative of the Wethersfield Historical District Commission, and that is the gentleman we've already uh, talked about, uh, Damien, yep. and I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce his last name, C-R-E-G-E-A-U. He's an alternative, but he's already been Crigo. approached. How do you say it, Amy? Crigo. Crigo. Okay, thank you. Exactly as it's spelled. Yes. Okay, we go. <laughs> and then the representative of the town government would be, I guess, Peter and Jesse. And that would be it. Yeah. That would fulfill all the people on the uh, in the positions as such. Right. Uh, I I know I was approached about a year ago by the Democratic Committee, and I did pose the question uh, to Peter and to Chris: Does it have to be each party representative within the commission? That I don't know. Is a certain percentage minority percentage they have to maintain? Um, so we'll have to look at that. Did you notice if the list that you saw had the party affiliation for, for the folks? No. No, okay. 
No. All right. No, and so Peter, it also comes down to how many people are independents. Right. Me. Carol, are you a re listed Republican Party? Carol? Mm -hmm. And I'm listed as a Democratic Party. So the independents can be claimed by either party if they want right. to do it. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. But I'm not even sure if it makes a difference since they specifically designated who the represent who they're representing, the organizations yes. they're representing. So I don't know if the minority majority makes as much of a difference um, in this case. So I think so that's what Go ahead, Carol. So that's where we are at this point. So uh, Peter, do you wish to uh, approach uh, anyone on the Silas Dean Highway? Or does anyone have any other suggestion besides the one that's, ones I've mentioned? I think the suggestion about a restaurant is a good one. Uh, I just think um, John from the Cove Deli, five o'clock meetings for him are probably out, out of the question. They're doing a lot of... Um, you know, prepared stuff at dinner time now. So yeah, they are, um, yeah. I, it would be rare that he would be able to come to a meeting. So um, if we can find, and that that's probably the problem with other restaurants as well, you know, so mm. it might be a challenge getting, but I think um, we can think about that further. But let's be honest, Peter, we've had representatives that have never come to a damn meeting. So true, that's true. <laughs> We always want to aim high. <laughs> but I do think if we say to them, when it really affects you, we really need you there if you can find the time. Yeah. Right. And that was, again, that eliminates that horrible feeling, I guess, to these people who are so busy mm. during that period of time. Oh, I'm going to miss it again. I'm going to miss it again. I'm going to miss it again. Mm. And so it might only be like once a whole year that they would be, mm. they would be coming. I think that's a good idea. I thought uh, Sam Shaw was a good idea. I suggested him a year or so ago. He's, um, he's liquor, the liquor guy, right? Yeah, yes. He's so involved. He, he contributes to so many organizations and uh, fundraisers. So why don't we start with Sammy, Sam first, and then if not, maybe Cove Del Deli. But um, Peter, can we say that we've reviewed this and we still, you know, it would be nice to have a true, some appointments for people. Yes. I, so I, I think, think half of our terms have expired. Yeah, so Long I think it's, a, it's just a matter of getting the terms, you know, updated. And then it looks like there's only two slots that we would have to do some additional outreach and that would be the Silestein Highway and then the Historic District Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll talk to the chair and make the suggestion and they can reach out to him rather than us reaching out to him without Today, talking yeah. to the commission themselves. There may be someone else who also wants to, to do it. Uh, uh, businesses that have been on the Silas Dean Highway for a long time, and maybe they would have more interest. I don't know, or maybe they would be bored, but you know, like Sterling Jewelers or that, that little jeweler down in the, in the mall. Yeah, they've been there a long time. So they have a vested interest in the, in the sit, you know, the town. I don't see them wanting to participate. Yeah, there's, the, there's nothing in it for them. You don't think? Well, what yeah. kinds of things would you expect the, those businesses to get out of it, whoever is the representative? I mean, it's tourism. So restaurants, hotels. Um, Axe throwing. So it'd be mostly places that. Axe throwing. Right. <laughs> 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 have it something should be to a while eat. to hear that one. <laughs> In the escape room, the escape room people. Oh yeah, right. Oh. I, I think any time that they can be affiliated with something we do in the historic district, they might have an interest. Okay. Yeah. So. I didn't realize that they wanted that tight connection. I thought it was probably to bring something to the Silestine Highway, but it's to make a connection between them and the historic district. Right. Well, that's how that's how I viewed it. Peter, what would you like me to do next? Chris, what would you like me to do next? Anything? No, I'll, I'll, I'll take it to the next level. I, we're, I, I'm actually trying to get the council to appoint some other vacancies on other boards and commissions. So if I can get that all lumped in together, 
um, then there would be a significant accomplishment. So I'll um, see if I can get, you know, some of that. We've got some vacancies on planning and zoning, design review. Um, so it is becoming more and more of a challenge to get people involved. So let me uh, see if I can get that all in one big pot and get those appointments made. Okay, and are you gonna do it via email? You're gonna call them, what are you gonna do? Uh, it'll probably be a combination of, of uh, all of those. Okay, so if you send the email and can just include me, then I'll reply to all and say how important it is. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, wayfinding signage, no updates since last month, so we can skip that. Is that okay, Peter? Fine with me. We just need to probably get a meeting. Yes, up. we do. Uh, community photo contest is this Thursday at 1130. Yes. So that, that will be a virtual meeting. Tomorrow, I plan on sending you the um, PowerPoint with all the photos and the um, judging uh, criteria with the list. So we're going to have to figure out um, how to do this virtually. Um, I think there's a hand raising function somewhere um, where when we get to the voting um, or we just do the yeah, there's a little hand raised button somewhere here. So we'll figure it out, but. Um, I think you have to set up the meeting with those polling options. Yes, okay. So when you set the Zoom meeting up, you have to put that into your settings. Yep. Okay. Who has an iPad besides me? Nobody. Okay, <laughs> I thought I'd ask where it's located on the iPad. So we'll send you them tomorrow. So if you if you can go through them before the actual meeting and get your, you know, the ones you like kind of narrowed down, that'll help speed the meeting up. We do have um, more photographers and more photos than we did last year. Wow, so not surprised. To, to try and expedite oh, good. it. We've got, and we got some new, new names, new, new people. So, uh, and some of the usual uh, photographers. So, um, so it was a pretty good response. And a lot of people use the Dropbox function. Good. So that helped. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. that way we didn't have to download off of disks and flash drives and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, new business, stakeholders meeting summary. I'm pretty sure everybody on this call was on that stakeholders meeting. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> so, so I'm not even gonna summarize because it was really just reiterating uh, what we had talked about at the last meeting. Um, I, I will say that I think the scarecrows have been amazing. Yep in terms of the number of people coming into town and strolling through. So um, that's been really good. Um, I mean, I've seen it posted all over Facebook and people going, oh, you should go to Weathersfield. It's been great. So mm -hmm. um, if we do the door contest and the shopkeepers do the every Thursday in December, I think that'll be a nice way to kind of bring in the holiday season since we're spiking in COVID again. <laughs> I saw a woman with her children at the scare, one of the scarecrows on uh, Saturday. And I said to her, I says, oh, and we probably will have Christmas decoration doors uh, toward Christmas. Oh, that's wonderful. So that'll be the enthusiasm because it'll be something, again, you can do with the kids outside. Yep. Right. Yeah. So that'll be good. So talk um, it up. Okay. Brochure, brochure distribution, Hartford Travel Center. So I was approached uh, by uh, Mike McGarry. I don't know if folks know him from yep. Hartford uh, News, Hartford Publications. He's he's apparently going to take over uh, space in the Hartford Travel uh, Center. It's the new, uh, well, it's relatively new, but exit 33, there's a truck um, and uh, electric vehicle charging um, facility there. It has space in there for a visitor's information uh, center. He's going to, uh, he's putting a proposal together to man that and to have uh, hard copy literature 
for all the destinations in the region. So he's reached out to us. I'm still waiting for a financial proposal. It's, mm -hmm. It'll be nominal. It won't be a lot of money. But um, so the opportunity would present itself for um, the Historical Society, Webb Dean Stevens, Shopkeepers, and some of the other uh, literature that we have promoting uh, historic Weathersfield to be um, front and center there. Um, so that is being fleshed out. Um, so the, the exit is north of Hartford on exit 33, um, but you can access it from both directions. You know, it's, it's on the north side. So if you're heading north on the interstate, you know, you're heading obviously, uh, you're past Weathersfield already, but people coming south can get off there, get the service there and continue on south. So I have uh, no idea where that is. <laughs> yeah, it's off. It's off of the highway. So it's not. Um, I don't know if you're, there was a big news splash about it a couple of years back when they were building it. So, um, but in any event, I wanted to put it on the agenda. Um, and once we get a more specific proposal, we can talk about it in, in more detail. Okay. All right. Um, and then while we're on that subject, Peter, why don't we talk about the visit New England renewal? Sure. So if you remember last year, um, we uh, subscribed to the Visit New England um, organization. Uh, they did uh, a bunch of profiles uh, and stories. Of th th These are virtual. Um, they did provide me with kind of a summary of how many views, how many clicks, uh, and that kind of thing for various um, articles that they listed that promoted um, Weathersfield. So they are asking if we want to re-up uh, again uh, this time around um, as our contract has expired. It was a one-year contract. This is the first year that we did it. So they're asking if we want to um, re-up again. Um, I just got the reminder today that our contract was up and I did not get a chance. They did not attach or at least Chris, I didn't see it in the attachment, a new cost proposal. Uh, I think it was in the email. Um, hang on a second. It was in the email. Um, oh, let me go find it again. I just had it. <laughs> um, I think it was from uh, Aaron K. Brown, if you want to so She said annual ad campaign renewal cost is 1100 with the option of payment in two consecutive monthly installments. So they were recommending to keep the current placements and to add biking as an added value, no cost. And their copywriter will refresh all of the listing copy and write copy for biking as well. Um, so just so you know, she reported 1,374 direct clicks to Weathersfield from Visit New England. Um, and the 1100 is basically for a year. So it'll go from September to September because that's what our contract was last time. Um, there were 154,000 views. So that was the other statistic that they provided us. Right. I think the 1100 is the same as it was last year. Yeah, it's a, it's a nominal amount. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for the digital, I think it makes sense. More people use the digital. Um, just so you have an idea, you know, they had 4,000 for foliage, um, 3,800 for Visit Connecticut, 12,000 views for walking and hiking with 309 clicks, which is pretty good. Um, the 50 great things to do in Connecticut, 426 clicks. Uh, the other big one was the um, farmer's markets in Visit Connecticut. So um, it's a nominal amount. I think it makes sense to spend the money. I don't know how, how do the rest of you feel. I'd rather spend it on digital than paper. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think that's the way to go is that's where people are looking now is online. Mm. 
Especially now that everybody's home too. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, so can we have a motion to approve a renewal of the Visit New England ad for eleven $1 hundred dollars for one year? For one year. So moved. Thanks, Judy, and thanks, Carol. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Okay, um, promo video. So if you remember, it's many years ago now, we did a, yeah. and I think the promo video is still on the Historic Weathersfield page. Um, this, this is kind of a follow-up to our last conversation where we talked about the commercial NBC TV. Mm -hmm. so I, there's a, and, and the town manager has been looking into this as well. So I, there's clearly a, a growing interest in updating and or creating a new um, set of promotional videos for the community. Um, it might be a series, you know, one aimed at economic development, another aimed at tourism, another end aimed at, you know, moving your family to Weathersfield as a great community. So uh, there's no specific proposal on the table just yet. I just wanted to put it on the agenda, um, make you aware that this is coming down the pike at some point. Uh, I don't think any, any decisions or any direction has been made yet as to how best to do this. But the, uh, the inquiry from NBC uh, TV got everybody thinking about the need. So um, obviously, um, whatever we do, we want to keep in mind, you know, the history of the community and, uh, you know, promoting Weathersfield as a place to visit. So that would ultimately be part of that. Whether we will need a contribution or not from the various boards and commissions remains to be seen. But nevertheless, um, I wanted you to be aware of that. There are companies that will create these pieces in exchange for being able to go out into the business community and sell advertising. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> leery of that as well. Um, once you set them loose on the business community, right. uh, they wave around a letter from the town. So it makes like the town is the one imposing upon them. It gives me, it doesn't give me a great feeling. So we're looking at other ways uh, that we could finance something like that. Um, so I just wanted it to be on your agenda and uh, we'll probably be discussing this at, at future meetings. So if anyone has any thoughts on that, we would be uh, open to uh, uh, consider um, folks who might be out there who do produce these kinds of things. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, 2020 Tourism Award. Peter, didn't we already agree at the last meeting that we were going to do slip away? Yeah, I, I just wanted to be on the, the official record. We talked about it, I think, at the Heritage uh, Stakeholders meeting, which isn't considered one of the oh, regular tourism meetings. So got you. Okay. Um, it's really on here to confirm that and get that on the record. We're not going to do an in-person uh, sal salute to business this year. We are uh, uh, exploring, asking the award winners to produce a, ver a very short um video of themselves uh, accepting the award and promoting their business, which we would then use uh, in the future to help promote the business community. So um, we may have an, an event at some point if this ever passes and we can meet again in person, but for the uh, December event, we are not gonna host an in-person, but we are gonna give out awards anyway. Okay. So we, uh, we, we, we did talk about slip away. So I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page on that. Do you want a formal motion? That would be good. Someone like to make that motion? Make a motion. Thanks, Carol. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Carol. Two Carols. Any further discussion? 
I was going to say your your audio is not working, Judy. <laughs> Every once in a while it does, but for the most part, uh, she wants to know where are we with the award video videos? Uh, we're, we, we think we've settled on the um, video platform to do that. And we are now um, reaching out to the businesses to inform them and to uh, give them kind of details on how we want those to be produced. So, um, we want people to be creative and do their own thing to promote themselves. So, um, so they could do it at their own business if they want to. Yep. 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 They can do whatever they want. As long mm -hmm. as we, there's certain bits of information we want to make sure are in there to help promote right. them so they don't miss that. So we're putting a, right. bit of a script together for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we had a motion on the floor for slip away River Tours to get the 2020 Tourism Award. If there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor say, well, raise your hands. <laughs> it's easier. Okay, any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, 2021 Town Guide and Calendar, are we producing one this year? We are, um, so we just, we're ramping up that process. Um, so if you are uh, representing an organization and you know at this point, if you are having events that you wanna include in the calendar, uh, we will be collecting those as well. I know it's um, some, some of the events we normally have are very unlikely to uh, be held uh, at least in the near future, but if you um, wanna put the dates in there, obviously people are gonna realize that, you know, given what's going on, the events may not be um, it may not be held unless you've already made that decision. We probably will put them in the calendar anyway, given the fact we don't know exactly when this yeah. might be over. So, well, um, if you just put a blanket kind of, we we hope that all of these dates will actually be uh, have become reality. But understanding that everything is in flux given the current environment. Yeah, we usually we usually put something in there for the month, the following thirteenth month of. January, those dates being tentative anyway. So something along those lines, we could put up. Yeah. Okay, all right. And then Peter, you sent us a 2021 meeting schedule. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're basically sticking to the last Tuesday of the month, no meeting in July. Um, November would be after Thanksgiving, if it's the 30th, yes. correct? Yep. Okay, and then no meeting in December. I yep. think they're fine. Anybody else, anyone else have any issues? All right. So, okay. All right. Um, shall we snow? Judy, I'm not sure how you're going to do your update. <laughs> I was going to say, um, oh, she wants to know what the deadline was for the, for the audio award videos too. Uh, we're keeping that flexible. I, we haven't really set a hard, hard deadline for that yet. So, I'm assuming you're going to hire someone to kind of roll it all into one, just um, master video, so you can hit play and not have to worry about it. Yeah, we'll, we're going to. We think this product allows us to do that. If not, we'll uh, we'll go to our old standby, Jesse. <laughs> The youngest There's a guy in Plainville who's been doing a ton of these Zoom annual meetings um, for a lot of the foundations, Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, Aurora Foundation, United Way. So if you want his name, I can give it to you. But um, I, Jesse's been doing a good job so far. So if you can't figure it out, start with Jesse. Yep. <laughs> you're, on, you're on notice, Jesse. Oh, I see it's a, a good thing. there. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's job. It's job security. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go into updates from all of our commissions and organizations. Peter, you've been asked to do EDIC. <laughs> okay. Um, as I say, we're we decided. Uh, obviously, we're not going to do the salute, um, but we may try and 
reconnect in the spring or the summer if if uh, the opportunity presents itself to do something in uh, in person. Um, obviously, we're working on the town um, guide and calendar, so that's taking up a bunch of our time. Um, we are um, looking at our various business incentive programs and comparing them to other communities um, to see if we need to be doing something um, a little bit differently to remain competitive with some of our neighboring towns, particularly as it relates to some of the white elephant properties that we can't seem to get redeveloped. So that's gonna be a conversation we have with the council over the next few months um, as we do that kind of analysis. Um, we're doing a little bit of an analysis of the facade improvement program and realizing that the return on investment is very significant and probably more significant than most people realize. So we're, we'll, be, we'll be sharing that information shortly on, uh, on how those programs have benefited the community. Um, there is some movement on the um, Jordan Lane nursing home, the Masonic oh. building on Main Street, as well as 1000 Silas Dean Highway. So I don't know, it's probably the first time I've said that all in one sentence at the same time. There's always seems to be moving parts uh, at different times with those properties. But right now uh, there's somebody seriously looking at each one of those. So um, knock on wood, we may see something um, happen. Uh, the odds are pretty good. So, um, those are probably the highlights, Reader's, Reader's Digest highlights. All right, great. Uh, do we have anyone from Shopkeepers on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, now we find out who it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie Ford, I'm here. Yeah, hey, Charlie, do you have any um, new updates on the door contest or how the scarecrows are going? Uh, well, scarecrow is going very well. The, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've seen the, the publication that, that, that just came out, uh, Weathersfield Autumn Times. Uh, I picked up a copy in one of the local stores. Uh, the, the entire publication is uh, Scarecrow uh, photos. Oh. And, uh, did the shopkeepers produce that story? It was Hartford, uh, Hartford, Pub Hartford News, Hartford Publication. They did oh, one okay. in this. They did one in the summertime when the businesses were just reopening. They did another one. Um, I think it was paid for by ad by private advertising. Got you. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So. Yeah, and I guess there uh, there was a TV exposure also. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, one of the local local channels, and uh, the, uh, the the door decorating is they're in the process of uh, planning that and and uh, get, getting that going. Okay. And then they're 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 going to do. Uh, uh, through most of December, the uh, uh, Thursday evening, where uh, shops were going to be open late, and some special publication of that, special promotion. Okay. All right, great. Okay. Amy, I don't think Joe's no. on, so do you want to take? Oh, sorry, Charlie, I cut you off. Sorry, we are all set? Yeah, yes. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, Amy, you want to take Historical Society? Yes, well, we're right in the middle of filming with uh, the History Channel. Um, this is just about the midpoint of the filming. They've been filming in and outside the Herbert Dunham House and outside the Keeney Center. You've probably seen the tents and the trucks and all that. So, um, it's kind of hectic for our staff, but uh, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a few behind the scenes sneak peeks. So uh, this is gonna be a nice series when it comes out, I guess next yep. year. 
So we're very happy now that we've got three productions under our belt. Yeah. Exciting. Um, we're still hoping to open after the election next week. Um, barring any new directives uh, regarding COVID. Um, we're just in the process of putting up our physical exhibit on Weathersfield women. Uh, Christina's worked very hard on that. So that's exciting. Um, some bad news, our grant for 2021 from the Hartford Foundation Robert Allen Keeney Memorial Fund has been cut by almost $20,000. Wow. So, uh, no Keeney coolers next year, unless I can get sponsorship other places for that. Um, we're having to tighten our already tight belts at the Historical Society to make sure mm -hmm. we can keep our educational programs going and our exhibits. Um, and of course, we have a lot of fundraising to do. So yeah. I was told by Hartford Foundation that they don't imagine any scenario where we wouldn't get our usual amount again the following year. It's basically because of COVID that um, our funds were cut. So really bad year for us for that to happen, but we're- Yeah. Is it because the, all of everyone's investments had a downturn? Or they use the money for other things. They use the money for COVID-related things. Got you. Okay. Hmm. So I'm happy that because they originally cut it way back, and I protested that, and so um, it's now just twenty thousand dollars that we're down. So. Um, it's going to be tight. We'll be okay. We'll ha we have a nice exhibit plan for next year. Um, hopefully we get all the funding in place for that maritime weathers field. Hmm. Um, so. All right. We have how, and our lantern light tours are almost done. We have two more characters to film. We had a couple of uh, our actors pull out at the last minute. We had to recast and that took a little while, but um, we're just about there. Oh, good. So when will you start posting those? Um, I'd say first week of November, if um, we can get everybody in. We finally, we've got our costumes done and our people cast. So it's just two more characters to film. And then Kevin needs to do the, the production of the, the editing and all of the, the entire film. We're excited. It's it's we've got some really good actors this year um, because they didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> so, yeah, we're excited. Good. Uh, there's nobody on for Web Days, Steven, so we'll skip that. And Jesse, you're up. Uh, things are going well as usual in fall. Uh, we get a lot of people. Uh, social media is flowing really nicely. Um, I would like to send the newsletter out uh, slightly early. I might send it out maybe tonight or I, at least before the first. Because um, I would like to get uh, the 11th annual virtual Jamie's Run, uh, which is Sunday. And then try to maybe get the last day of Scarecrows out there. That's what November first as well. Um, there's a a workshop for the Art Academy, and that's on November fourth. So everything's really early. And then all I have after that is Witch of Blackbird Pond, which I'm not is to the 15th, but I saw I thought I saw something saying it was to the 29th or something. I think they extended it according to the paper. They, they extended it again. Well, they extended it once. So that's I thought that's what you were referring to. No, I saw something where they were talking about a contest where you could win the map. That's correct. Phil, that's Phil's that, map. Right. And then it says it. You can, it said something like you can win this map through the, the 
date to the tour or something like that till the 29th. And I was thinking, I'm like, I don't know if it was a miss, like, uh, you know, mistype or something. So I didn't know how to go about. I was hoping somebody from Webby and Stevens would be here tonight to help me out, but. The land trust, I mean, it's Webb Dean Stevens, but it's the land trust that um, it's their property. So who set the dates? What's that? Who set the dates? Was it the land trust or was it Webb Dean Stevens? What, I think Webb Dean Stevens yes. uh, right. set the dates. Um, I, I, I can go back to social media and try to find out on there, but I don't think... I wonder if I could find um, the post really quick just to read it. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Um, it says it, tours through November 29th on Web Dean Stephen website. Yeah, it says one lucky person will win the Sunning Blackbird, uh, Witch of Blackbird Palm map. Uh, you know, everyone who takes the tour uh, through November 29th. Yep, never, and it's on their no one, website, Jesse. So it is. Oh, it's the on. The, it's on their web. It's actually on their website. Yeah, it's on Web Dean Stevens' website under okay. exhibits and events. So then they, then they extended it a third time. Okay. Okay, so you can go to the. You can go to that page and get up any more information. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good to know. Yep. All right, and uh, let's see. Um, I might make a, a scarecrow video this year. I don't know. Depends uh, how much time I have. Um, I do have a suggestion uh, for scarecrows uh, this year or for next year. I went on the tour and I, and I brought my uh, my younger daughters and I made like a um, scavenger hunt. Yeah. And it was really simple. It was just like tally how many um, pumpkins you see, tally up how many us. Uh, you know bats you see uh can you find and i because i already went on the tour taking pictures and doing other things so i know what uh, i was like find the three uh witches doing this find uh this and check it off and whatnot oh that's cute um, right and if we put it into stores or whatever you can people can go into the store pick it up or go to keeney center pick it up whatnot uh the big thing was i had a lot of people bugging me about it and they're like, where they were, where'd you get that? Where'd you like can we where, where do we find that? Which store did you go? Like, where did you, you know, where, did you get that from heirloom? And I was just like, no, I just made this myself. And it just yeah, a lot of, like it was and I was like, huh. I was like, maybe I should have just made a bunch for it. <laughs> like, yeah. So seriously, like, you should just make a bunch of copies and drop them off at a at a couple of at the country store in heirloom and say, here, people were asking for these. If you want to hand them out, hand them out. Right. <laughs> But it would be a good idea maybe to incorporate uh, for the, you know, the next coming year. I, you know, I don't know. It's just, just a suggestion. Um, well, if we made a whole bunch of them, you can down the bottom, you could say provided by the Webbersfield Heritage Committee or something, or tourism. Yeah. And connect them with the tourism bit, you know. Good point, Kira. Yeah, have our website on it or something, or and they can download yeah. it from our website if they want to, uh, you know, just a little, yeah. you know, have our have the historic Westfield logo on it. Um, okay. Uh, All right. So we should we, so somebody has to remember to put that in the tickler file. <laughs> so we remember it because you know next September is a long way away. It is. <laughs> I it think is. Judy's suggestion was good that instead of having paper to hand out that we're paying to make the thing, yeah, put it, put on, it the on the put it on the town thing. Let them print it on their paper. Yeah, yeah let them yeah. print it out. Yeah. Yeah. Or could they do something like that on their iPad? Yeah, they could just look it up, yeah. have it on their iPad. I, yeah. I don't know much about it. I mean, you could just put a link on the website saying, you know, here, yeah. pull it up a PDF. Do a PDF, they can yeah. either work it or we can somehow make it so, uh, you know, they can check it off themselves just by digitally touching it or whatever. I know there's mm -hmm. some ways of doing that, but I would have to look into it. Right. Make it so that they download it so the children can have a piece of paper and, you know, yeah. I think they'd have more fun doing that than looking at their mother and father's iPhone. Yeah, they did. They, my, uh, my kids had a blast. They, yeah. The That's one that good. could do it. Yeah. 
other one's just one. She just <laughs> she, she just smiled and waved. Fun. She just smiled and waved at everybody. She was getting hints from when it's her turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see what else is there. So yeah, there was just a suggestion for that. Um, I was curious about. I think Amy answered a little bit about it. I was curious about the History Channel. Obviously, they're not done um, filming. I was wondering if there's certain days they're out there filming. They don't want to uh, advertise. Yeah, they, they don't want to, so they don't want any pictures. Okay. No, after the fact, and they would like more promotion around the time that it's going to air. Um, that's one thing, and the other is they have very strict COVID protocols. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. And actually, all of the historical society staff had to be tested for um, just to be around them. Wow. So they really don't want. Well, I didn't want to get like in there. I was just going to do maybe like a photo from like far, like outside or something. You know, I didn't know if they're. It's it's mostly inside they're filming from. Pardon? They're they're mostly filming from inside. They're filming both inside and outside. Okay. Um, like they're using a couple of the doors at Keeney as, as loading dock doors for some of these old companies they're talking about. Um, they used like north stairwell doors and a, a door on the back of the Keeney for that outside. They were on the side of the Hurlbut Dunham house. I know there's a shot they need to get that's on the porch and that's why there's no scarecrows in front of the Hurlbut Dunham house. Um, Oh, yeah, huh. yeah. A number of things there. It's it's several different episodes that they're getting shots for. Right. Oh wow. So the problem with posting any pictures, Jesse, is is that people will start to go there, and they were right. considering all their COVID restrictions and the rest of it. I think that's really why they're on the kind of down low under the radar. Yeah, definitely. So, Understood. Okay. Yeah. I got that. Um, let's see what else do I have here. Any question about the um, um, uh, the door decorating, I guess. So that's going on, right? And um, we don't have specific no dates. dates. But we hear there were no dates or anything specific right. yet, and there's nothing specific about the Thursdays, possibly. Right. Okay, but when that comes out, I will need that. Um, and I guess that's about it. Right. Jesse, I think that Jesse, I think the shopkeepers are actually meeting tonight to work out some of those details. So maybe tomorrow, if you want to reach out to Joe, he may be able to share that with you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any other business anybody has? Judy just asked me to uh, let you know that the the EDIC is conducting a. Uh, community-wide business survey. We do not have a comprehensive directory and more importantly, email contacts for all the businesses in town. So we're making a concerted effort um, to do that. So that mailing will be going out in the next couple of weeks to um, all the businesses in town. We're putting a survey monkey together so that to try and make it easier for people to respond. So hopefully, um, that will become the basis for a more comprehensive business directory in town, and which I think ultimately will benefit uh, yep. heritage tourism as well. So we'll I've got something for us. Go we ahead, Charlie. Charlie. I'm, uh, two, two questions. Um, one is obviously the appointments are uh, going to be different than what people have been, some people have been currently sitting on the commission. When are those appointments going to be made? Does anybody know? No. No. It could be never. It could be next week. It could be six months from now. Um, the council has been really bad about uh, making those appointments to the various commissions. So we don't have an answer. We actually took it upon ourselves to say, hey, here's who we think should be sitting there. Could you please go ahead and make the appointments? So. Okay, so I should still attend the meetings until I hear otherwise? Yes, you are still a member of the commission until you've been kicked off, so. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to check. 
Good. And did you have something else? No, that's okay. Never mind. The other, you guys did did it anyway. So I just was going to support a couple of the other items, but you don't need my support. You're doing it. Okay. All right. Well, then if there is uh, no other business, um, I'd take a motion to adjourn and we'll see you all the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. <laughs> motion to adjourn. All right. You all Bye, do the everybody. same. It's going to be different this year. Yes. <laughs> It will be. Many people will be celebrating Thanksgiving by themselves. Right. We should just do a Zoom Thanksgiving meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Peter. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. We'll see you bye, bye now. Yep.